Welcome to the Footwork In Podcast, everybody. Today is a good one. We have uh, Trevor, of course. Trevor's always here. What's up, guys? You know, Trevor and, uh, you know, it's just Trevor. And then you got me. And then Peyton's not here, basically. So uh, it's two-thirds of us. We don't we don't know where Peyton is. He did not tell us he wasn't coming. He did say that he goes to bed at 8 o'clock. But, you know, we assumed he would be here. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is really the only time we could do it. Uh, but he's not here, and we we talked to him at five thirty. Is the last text we got from him? Yeah, and, so you know, we don't know where he's at. Where is he? That's the question. We have but Rylan anyways, here, but you can't see him. Yeah, Rylan. Rylan. Happy on, belated birthday. Yep, he's already Two putting his kids old. on the internet. <laughs> he's a star. But so, this yeah. is episode two, this man. We've we've made it. We made two it, bro. episodes and now. We've, we upgraded. We've lost We've... one person. So, I hope it doesn't keep at that rate. By the episode four, there'll be no people here. <laughs> yeah, guys. So stay tuned with us as we see if we can make it to episode five with get everybody back, even though we lost one person, and move forward. But what you been up to, man? How's your week been? Man, it's been, you know, it's been a pretty good week so far. It's just started. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, I got a haircut. You might could tell a little bit of difference. Uh, oh, they will. But that's the highlight of my week. I've seen the comments. The man's got <laughs> a pro. Bro, yeah. For sure. And, uh, you yeah, know, good week. Actually, I'm trying a new thing this week. Where, uh, so traditionally, for like the past two years, you could probably go to my YouTube channel and see the video where I did a 30-day challenge of uh, waking up at 4 in the morning. So I started the 30-day challenge, and I never finished it. So I stuck with it. You know, it's evolved over the years, but uh, right now it's about 4, 4.30. Well, not right now. No, until got three a, days got ago. got a new thing going on. So the other day, actually, this is how it started. I've actually thought about this multiple times, uh, the idea of just flipping my schedule. Because, you know, theoretically, the, only, the main reason I get up that early is just so I don't take time from my wife and kids. Because, I mean, dad life, you got to. You got to make it happen. I was listening to a podcast, the Nick Bear. Uh, it's the Bear Performance Nutrition Podcast the other day, and they Great were like, guy. it's dad time before your kids wake up or after they go to sleep. So I am trying night workouts. So basically, when we get done with this, I don't know, it's 8.50 right now. So maybe like 10 o'clock, I'll go to the gym. That's, uh, that's kind of crazy, man. Yeah, <laughs> which is not optimal, but op- obviously getting up at four in the morning is not optimal either. So you're going to so, work out and get up at 4.30 in the morning? No, 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 no. Okay, I'm not okay. getting up that early. I'm not getting up that early. I was a little early. confused. So I'm what, sleeping. What, do you have like a time limit? Are you like, as soon as I get home, whenever I go to sleep, I need to get X amount of hours, and then that's when I'll wake up? Yeah, I mean, as a dad, it's kind of like impossible to get eight hours this, if you... You know, if you have legit fitness goals, I mean, if I was just to go, I, you know, just for general fitness is kind of what we're going to get into. Uh, you know, I could go for an hour and be good, but you know, with the goals I have, and you know, I just enjoy going and working out for a long time. Like I could be in the gym up to three hours sometimes. You know, not right now, but uh, eight hours isn't going to happen. I'm usually with the with the four o'clock schedule. I'm looking at seven and a half. And that's that's pretty good, you know. If the babies aren't sleeping, it's closer to six and a half, maybe. But yeah, averaging I mean, around uh, seven, seven. Everybody's 20. got their own type of, I guess, optimal sleep hours. Yeah. I think for me, I mean, as the more the better. I, get, I don't know. I feel like once you get to a point, though, it's kind of like you'll be tired when you wake up. Like you won't get yeah, the I mean, optimal amount. Of sleep. Well, you have I to put in anything in, over ten. Like I'm just a zombie. You like. have to you have to put in the work. You know, if you're like working out <laughs> for six hours a day, I'm sure ten hours isn't gonna like do you like that. But I, I feel you because if I if I sleep in too long, I'm just like drowsy. Wake up tired. I mean, no matter when you wake up, you're waking up tired because you've been asleep. So yeah, exactly. that's the thing I learned with waking up at four. I'm like, I'm literally waking up at seven and waking up at four. Same feeling. You know, it just lasts a little longer when you wake up that early, and it kind of more fatigue overall. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm 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 uh, flipping the script, and I'm actually uh, vlogging it for my YouTube. I'm gonna kind of track the progress. 
So they say it's actually more optimal for like strength training and hypertrophy to do uh, later in the day. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Like I couldn't quote you why, but that's like the popular opinion right now with just research and, you know, bro science is that, you know, working out later in the day. Cause I mean, most people, you know, or most people you see on YouTube that don't have a job, they're just going in the afternoon. So that's probably the best time. But, you know, afternoon is not possible for me because I have to work. Yeah. And I can't do it after work because, you know, my wife's been home all day with the kids. I'm not just going to go work out for three hours and then, oh, it's eight o'clock time for the bed, you know, time for bed for the kids. So I miss basically miss my whole day with them. Uh, You know, there will be days I go in the afternoon, but, you know, right now I'm trying to midnight basically so we'll see how it goes it well, actually yeah we'll keep them updated this yeah. is i don't yeah, yeah i don't think i feel like uh, i used to do this like uh i'm 26 now but back when i was like 21 i think yeah about 21 that's when i really started fitness uh me and sean we'll have sean on the podcast one day shout out sean but i don't know how we did it but we'd go to the gym at like nine o'clock almost every night but also, we didn't have. Yeah, there's all jobs. kind of people in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it would always be like packed. I was always amazed. If you and... don't like, I can control my hours at work. So if it gets to be where, like, I'm super tired and dead every day, just because I'm I'm basically, uh, like technically I'm gonna end up with less sleep doing this schedule, but my workouts might end up being better. Uh, yeah, I guess but, we'll see. Because I usually in the mornings. I'm like super like dead half the time anyway. Yeah. And uh, I I have to like, as soon as I wake up, chug caffeine and that's not healthy. You know, you're really supposed to wait a couple hours at least before you hit caffeine. You know, Andrew Huberman. I didn't know that. His advice, you know, is basically 90 to 120 minutes. You're supposed to wait. Uh, So your energy levels bounce off at that, you know, in the day later. Uh, Because your body has natural processes that, you know, regulate energy. And your hormones and all that, blah blah blah, technical stuff. That I'm, you know, I'm not an expert on that. But, anyways, it's it's. I feel like it's gonna be healthier for me to go at night right now. I'm trying it out. If I don't like it, you know, I'm going to go right back to what I was doing. But actually, the other night, uh, seven days at least. That's my minimum challenge because I was like, I really was like, when I started it, I was like, basically talk myself back out of it because that's why I've never done it before because. It's a big switch, you know, because then you have to stay up all night, one night, basically, because you woke up 4 a.m. that morning. Actually, how this came about is the other night. Uh, what Was that when we shot the first one? Uh, yeah, I think that was. Shoot the yeah. first. I don't know if you worked out that night. or. Well, I, I didn't work out that night, but I was going to, I think. But I was drinking the, uh, the energy drink, and Peyton was like, Bro, you're drinking that at six something at night, and I was like, "Yeah, bro, oh, I'm going yeah, to Uber." Yeah. That was, and then that was the podcast. Yep. That's yeah, I got one. done with that, and I didn't go Uber because I, you know, I mean, me and Abby, me and Abby just hung out the rest of the night, basically, which is good because with my schedule now, our we're kind of backwards because she's she's more of a night person, and me being a morning um, person, you know, we barely got to hang out without the kids, you know, so it was pretty good, fresh fresh air the breath breath of fresh air the other night there you go you know just being able to hang out with her it's really good so i did that instead uh, she went to you know went on to sleep probably about 11 o'clock and i was up till two <laughs> so <laughs> yeah you were thought, wired you were like in the group chat like spitting out yeah, all these ideas y'all were not even I, there and i was just like i said uh i said uh night, night. i <laughs> went to sleep and left my phone in the living room i was like i'm just clocking out dylan i'm, I'm going to bed yeah. I was like, man, this sucks. Nobody's up. But uh, it's actually been all right since, you know, I've actually been busy. And she's actually been up with me, which is she's going to bed earlier tonight. But uh, I've gotten home the past two nights and she was awake. But, yeah, uh, it's been going pretty good. Uh, Like the other night, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. And then I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And I got tireder and tireder, more tired, whatever the proper term is. And yep. I'm, like, I'm not gonna do it. Then the next day, it was actual go time because I had to work out that night. Um, and uh, Abby was like, "You're doing this." <laughs> she basically was like, Whoa, "You're doing this." So she <laughs> pushed you to do it. Yeah, she. It's it's been. Uh, she's liking it. I'm actually. I'm enjoying it too. It's kind of different. I actually haven't been working this week, 
which is Tuesday. I usually don't work Monday anyway. So the real test is going to be next week if I keep doing it and I go back to work, which I'm taking this week off just to kind of help her. And I got a lot of editing to do anyway. So, yeah, that's that. That's what I've been doing. What have you been doing? Uh, let's see. What have I been doing? Well, today I actually dug a hole. So that was nice. Plumber Trevor. Yeah, just, you know, trying to pick up these odd jobs here and there. The the shovel Uh, didn't whoop you, did it? No, it was more of like, like how narrow the hole was, was like, you got to a point where it's like you're shoveling and you you can't, you can't get the dirt out. And you're like, crap, man, I wish I had post hole diggers. Yeah, but I was kind of—I was just there by myself. Had uh, David Goggins' new book in my ear, so yeah, that, that'll do it. That kept me straight. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, the guy came back and he was like, "Man, that's uh, that's one of the nicest holes I've ever seen, Doug. I really appreciate <laughs> your too nice. attention to detail." It's like, I was but like, next Whoa, time, man. go. You know, next time, don't do that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess I thought about it after he said it there. There's probably people that just don't know how to dig a hole properly, you know? Like, a lot of people would just dig a hole and just throw, you know, dirt just behind get it their done. back. Yeah. And then, but the thing is, you got to put the the dirt back in the hole. Yeah. So, yeah, so I did that, but I've been working out. I've been on my new grind. Yeah. Uh, my hybrid Tell us about build. it. Tell us about it. Yeah, the hybrid, hybrid build, build has actually been a lot of fun. I've I've been eating more. I've been working out more. Yeah. Shout out, Nick. Go one more, but I've been eating more and it's get, and working out more, which is like you would think working out more and running and lifting. I'm not lifting heavy, but I am lifting a lot of a volume. Lot. Yeah, you'd think I'd be tired. I do get really tired around like you know nine ten o'clock. I don't think I've seen eleven o'clock in the past two weeks, yeah. which is good because I like to get up early and get after it. Which happens some days and it doesn't happen some days. I don't know. But since I gotten on this, though, it's really taking it up. I was just literally like I was doing straight training and then trying to run. And then we got closer to the marathon. So I switched to just full mileage. Yeah, full mileage. No working out of the gym. And it was kind of depressing. Weight. Yeah, dropped like. Man, it's looking like a marathon. I don't even right? know, like almost 10 pounds probably in the whole process of training for the marathon. But uh, this Not week, me. it's been uh, it's it's been great. I've put on five pounds since I started my new program. So Dang, that's crazy. A lot of that is just like you know newbie gains, but also yeah, just eating sure. the right amount of calories water. that I need to. Yeah, water. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this week's been good so far. Uh, I'm really tired of the rain, so heard we're <laughs> we're gonna get some better weather bro, Thursday. I've tried to run, bro, and it like. The longest run I've done is five minutes. My my, my Achilles like lit up. Like it's like it's crazy because like we even you had this problem. Like I started running, trying to get back into it, and like a body part that didn't hurt at all during the race or after the race, it was like tore up. Like it was like stopped me. Didn't yeah, like your foot hurt or something. It didn't even yeah, hurt. I don't know what it is because I'm not a doctor. You know, <laughs> this is not but, medical uh, advice. It's not medical advice because I don't know how to cure it, but it's like the front of my foot, like uh, the muscle in the front of my foot. It just anytime, like if I do nothing throughout the day, it's fine. Like it'd be a little tender, but if Makes like sense. today I did uh, three miles and it doesn't hurt during the run, I can kind of feel it, but it doesn't hurt. But then after about an hour or so after, it's like this aching pain. So I don't know if it's it's seeming yeah. more like it's an injury than just a. We have some long term recovery to do. Yeah. So. But I don't know. I I'm we don't very, have a marathon right now. I'm very impressed by how well my feet looked after the marathon because the very yeah, first five k I ever ran, I pulled my sock off and my toe was black. My middle toe was like the That's nail was disgusting. like bent up, <laughs> and I had terrible huge blisters on my feet. And this just three miles. And then uh, yeah. when we did the marathon, I felt mile eight. I started feeling a blister coming on. So I was like, oh, crap. Eight miles yeah, in, and I got a blister coming up. This was, I'm just, I mean, I'm going to eat the pain because we're finishing, but this is going to yeah. tear my foot Yolo. up. And then got home. We're finishing. Totally fine. Besides this now, so I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much been my week. I mean, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but dude, I've been loving the workout. 
yeah, it looks good. Like if I wasn't, if I didn't have a goal that, you know, the goal of the CrossFit stuff right now, I would definitely like hop on that with you. Cause that looks legit. It just looks fun. I remember I, I did some of Nick Bear's workouts back when, uh, the quarantine and all that happened and, uh, they released some free stuff. It's pretty legit. It's pretty fun. Uh, yeah, we can kind of get into it. Yeah. Cause all this kind of goes together. So that's yeah. what you're doing. So right now, I'll go ahead and say what I'm doing right now. I'm doing, uh, he's following Nick Bear's hybrid build. Like he said, I'm I'm following Training Think Tank. It's a CrossFit program. Uh, getting ready for the CrossFit Open. I'm going to try, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. I'm going to do better this year. 10 to 20%, which is seems like a lot. And so it's actually it? a big range. It's in uh, the end of February. And I'm actually I'm preparing already, so I'm already beat next last year, probably the year before that, because I didn't have that much time. I might, this is my third open. First year I just started doing CrossFit in like January. It was in like the late February when the open was. The next year I'm like, hey, I learned muscle ups. I learned some double unders. If you if you know CrossFit, you know these things. It's like jump rope, but you go over it twice, so it's a it's a little harder. Um, but I learned that. You know, a little bit, not very good at all. And then the open came around and I completely forgot those skills. So the open, you know, I was like, hey, this is a couple weeks before the open. And I was like, bro, I cannot do any of these. So I knew that my hope for, because if you, if you have those skills and you're going up against somebody that doesn't, you automatically are above them in the leaderboard. So they get to that part of the workout, they're stopping, you're going. Even if you only get one muscle up, you're going to jump thousands of spots in the open so that's what i was hoping and then a couple weeks before i realized that wasn't going to happen and then i just kind of procrastinated and didn't put the work in at all and i actually got worse oh man the second year so you know there's a lot of factors that go into it but you know no excuses i did i got worse so come on dylan you got this year i'm i'm looking at 20 percent better because i have the skills and i'm a lot better at them this year been working at them all year the skills i've you know i put the strength training in and uh i'm going i'm full in on the crossfit i'm doing like at least two conditioning pieces a day uh you know marathon prep building the base but you know it's go time got two months i don't even know two and a half months maybe but uh (laughs) i'm gonna send it and i'm gonna document the whole thing and i'm gonna i'm gonna if, if i fail i'm gonna fail on my youtube channel so i'm gonna put it out there too so y'all hear it here first maybe not first maybe like it would just depend when this releases but that's what i'm doing i'm doing training think tank it's uh intermediate path path so it's it's not you know it's good for me Heck i'm just yeah, an average man. guy anyway well we'll stay tuned to it we'll we'll circle yeah. back on that i'm sure that'll be like a full breakdown podcast in the future Look, cause I, I don't my know two competitors about crawfish yeah game. crossfit Craw- crawfish games bro that sounds yeah, like fun. Crawfish. That's coming up in April. Yeah, CrossFit games. And look, my my gym buddies, uh, Peyton and Kane, they're usually the ones I'm always, they're always on my channel and we always, you know, they were the crew in the morning. Uh, you know, they are always crushing me. Peyton beats everybody and Kane be- destroys me. And uh, just bad. Like he's, he's 10 years older than me and he still with me. But uh, anyways, we'll get back. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that, you know. But uh, but yeah, Kane has not been training the past few months due to another reason. We might talk about that when he comes on. He's also going to come on. Uh, so hopefully with him not training and me training, I can at least catch up to him because there have been workouts. I have beat Kane in a workout or two, and I've beat Peyton in a workout or two. You know, it just has to be something they were really bad at and I have to go all the way, you know, I have to go in. Uh, but And Peyton yeah, hasn't you, been working out either, but he's going to do the open. You beat him I mean, on he's... that, um, what was it? That was a, the half marathon. You almost beat him on that. I think it was only like a minute off or something like that. I don't know, bro. So It's go but, time. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for you, man. I'm uh, I'm getting ready. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I've uh, uh, Today I was actually looking at like, some i don't know i thought they were called like triathlon not triathlons the they're called like duo athlons i don't know the other one was like what you do like biathlon but when i looked that up it was like skiing so 
Yeah, that don't, yeah. Something related to with racing a bike and running, I definitely that's on the list to take that down this year. Yeah. So that sounds, start that just sounds like the, fun. Yeah. So. Even swimming. Yeah. So it's a big jump though. Yeah, huge jump. But we might be able to get some swimming in here soon. I just don't think that's I'm gonna be incorporate that because I was thinking, oh, I'll just go knee deep. Let me just do a triathlon. But I don't know. Yeah. I think if I do a tri- I'll, slow, triathlon, I might as well just do an Ironman, and uh, that's You're coming crazy. up. You lost it. Like two and a half years, I plan on doing an Ironman. Yeah. So we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll I, be, I believe we'll you'll be, do it. I'm talking about me. That's gonna be. I just be want a that sticker, man. Seventy, what is it? Seventy point three. Yeah, you got the marathon sticker on your car. Yeah, I remember we went. Me and Dylan recently. That's the only uh, reason we went. What, like a month, a uh, month or two ago, we ran a five k, and there was this one guy that had his van, and he pulled up to it, and he probably had like over twenty plus, just whatever you want to call it, like ultras Stickers. from Ironman to Trevor marathons. was drooling at the mouth. He was like, I don't like, want that to be me. <laughs> yeah, for real. One down, bro. One down. One down. I'm at, I'm really excited for the future with this because Yeah. Man, we did a marathon, so that's that's gonna come up soon. That's crazy. But this episode, we're just gonna get into a little bit of how we got into fitness, why we're doing fitness, where we started. What is fitness anyway? Say, what is fitness? Let's just dig so, into it, bro. What is fitness? What do you think of what do you think fitness is? What do you think so, of when someone says fitness? I mean, honestly, when it comes to mind, you know, it's like working out, like being at the gym, yeah. throwing iron, like fitness yeah, I mean, to me when you say it like that. But I mean, I don't necessarily think you have to get a gym membership to start doing fitness. Yeah. There's different types of fitness. I think, you know, when I when I think of fitness, I mean, I feel like it's just being capable, you know, being ready and you know, there's fitness for people. There's fitness for life. You know, like, if, can you get out of bed? Can you walk down the street and back? Can you, you know, if someone, you know, someone's chasing you to kill you, can you get away? I mean, that's, a, <laughs> that, that happens. Yeah. Like health I mean, maintenance. If, yeah. And, I, you know, that's fitness. I, you know, there's also fitness for, like, jobs or for, like, a career. Like, you think about a football player. His fitness is going to be different than a firefighter's fitness. But they're both fit because they're, you know, they're ready. And, you know, out of season, they may not feel fit, but they prepare through the summer or whatever. And then season comes around, they're fit. And, you know, you ask somebody that does CrossFit what fitness is, and it's just like working out, you know, whatever, you know, whatever they think fitness is. And you ask a bodybuilder what fitness is. And, you know, fitness for them is being in, you know, being lean or whatever. They're fit for their show. Uh you know, a lot of times I feel like fitness for like a job or like a competition or something, being prepared for that, you go to a certain extreme, you're kind of getting away from fitness for life. Cause I mean, you don't, you don't, you know, from health, cause you don't yeah. necessarily think an elite bodybuilder shredded to the gills is healthy. Like you're like, I mean, yeah, that's extreme. You know, you're, you're like, wow. Cause I mean, that's crazy how big they are. But yep. you don't necessarily, you know, some people aspire to that, but you know, they just want to push themselves, and they're not necessarily chasing health. They're, you know, I guess, I guess you could say health and fitness instead of just fitness for life and fitness for like a job or something. But yeah, or you could be like uh, those, you know, what are the endurance athletes in the Olympics? Yeah, they I mean, like a stick. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely not healthy to to yeah. be able to run like uh, ultra runners. I mean, they're yeah, not they're healthy when they're running just, 100 miles. Yeah. That's but they're like, fit for that race. Yeah. They're fit for that purpose. I think just being prepared for a purpose is, you know, being fit. Yeah, I mean, you never know when you've got to, like, protect your family yeah. or something. Like, maybe a bear comes up in your house, and you're like, well, yeah. thank goodness I've been at the gym hitting the bag. I can run away, and I can eat my family. Yeah. <laughs> or that, too. Me. You don't have to fight the bear. You can run. Right. Yeah, I think... Yeah, that's for sure. I think you everybody needs to aspire to be fit for life. And that's one thing that got me into fitness, too. I mean, we can go ahead and into that. But uh, just being able to protect my family. Because, I mean, look, before I got into fitness, 
And I mean, Trevor, you can attest to how small and skinny I was. Like I didn't know how skinny I was, but I knew that if something was to happen, I was in you no position sick. to def- yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Bro, we I might did. can uh you know what? Let's uh we'll throw up a picture Pull of it people. Up. Yeah, people that are viewing it up. from home. We'll, 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 we'll show a picture somewhere. of yeah, when Dylan started Me his before fitness journey. I started working out. Uh, I was very skinny, probably 145, 150 pounds. Bone, that was it. Skinny fat, probably. You know, I thought I was fat. I was trying to lose weight before I started. <laughs> Got really into it and actually learned that I needed to put muscle on. But yeah, I wanted to be capable of protecting my family. And uh, so that's what, I guess that's what fitness started out for me, you know, is being capable to, uh, you know, not be an asset. I, don't, I didn't want to, I mean, I want to be an asset. I don't want to be a liability. Like, I don't want to be the guy everybody's like, all right, man, well, if Dylan can, you know, if Dylan can do this, we'll make it. You know, I don't want to be the one that, you know, the low man. I want to be kind of pulling people yeah, up. Yeah, you want to pull your own like, weight. Yeah, I want to pull my own weight. Uh, you know, you never know what will happen or what you need to do. You don't want to be that guy that's like, yeah, we're going to ask we're gonna ask Trevor to help us lift this because, you know, Dylan, you, you're just weak, bro. <laughs> They're not going to say that. but it's Like, if I'm moving you know, heavy you, furniture, I'm going to be like... Like Dang, old bro, Dylan, yeah. when did you start? When did you start your fitness journey? All right, so this is a, it's kind of like, like this, man. So throughout life, you know, we played sports, uh, and like during seventh and eighth grade, I was even smaller. I was probably about a hundred pounds then, honestly. I don't know the exact you know weight, but that's in my guess. Uh, and you know, we started lifting weights with the football team, but I was so weak. That, you know, I was just ashamed to lift weights. So I was avoiding that at all costs. So I don't even think I even got a solid lifting session in during that time, you know, because I was like, bro, I can't even lift this training bar. So I don't even like, you know, I was kind of scared of it. Even throughout high school, the only fitness I would do would be like P90X. I was killing that Ad Ripper X, man. I don't even know if you know I remember what that when is. you were doing that. Yeah, like I was, I was waking up early in the morning doing that. And, you know, it, it lasted for a little while, but uh, that was, we, you know, I was doing that at home. There's only so far you can go at home with minimal equipment. If you have our, the right equipment, then no doubt you can do it at home. Uh, but, you know, with just 10-pound dumbbells, you're only going to get so far. And uh, so throughout high school, that's kind of what I did. I never really, I wanted to get into the gym because I saw other people doing it. But, again, I was kind of self-conscious. I didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, I was just so skinny and weak that I was just like, man, this, you know, you know, I was kind of scared, honestly, because I didn't want to look weak. I was, I was prideful. And then, uh, you know, I got married, do a little at home workouts here and there, like from YouTube. And then, uh, I'm trying to think of the year it was, well, it, you know, it was like three or four years ago. We had, uh, my wife got pregnant. You know, reality's kicking in that, you know, I'm going to have a baby. It really didn't hit me until we lost the baby that, you know, what the responsibility of being a father was. You know, I was thinking and reminiscing over, uh, you know, what could have been. And, you know, it yeah. was hitting me like, man, this is my son. You know, I could, you know, I could have, you know, I could be playing catch with you know, with him, but now I can't because he's gone. And then just basically as soon as that happened, I like, I don't know if it was like for emotional support. Like I just went straight to working out like really consistently, like four or five days a week. I was doing a push pull leg split with like, I was researching, man. Uh, I didn't know anything to uh, learn about splits and stuff like that. And uh, I was doing YouTube workouts. So it's like all pump stuff, uh, bodybuilding type stuff. But all I had was like 10, 15, 20 pound dumbbells leg day skipped it most times because i went so hard <laughs> yeah. on it i was sore for a week you know i'd do like so basically what i do is like dumbbell split squats and then i do like run down the driveway and back you know do some box jumps like i was just making this stuff up i had no idea what any of this was uh, but eventually you know so i, I my arm blew up pretty quick because i was doing like i was killing the like the curls and stuff i remember the uh first time i tried pre-workout i tried the bpn flight so i took it that night and was like, it says start out with half a scoop if you've never taken it. So I started out with half a scoop. I was feeling good. And I was like, I'm going to take another half a scoop. So I took a, you know, it was basically a full scoop for that workout. 
then that next morning I woke up and I, I took a, I may have took a scoop or half a scoop. And then I, all of a sudden I could start tingling and oh, like itching. Yeah, and I was like, tingles. oh bro, something's wrong, bro. I'm overdosed. I'm overdosing, bro. And I was <laughs> like, oh, I couldn't even work out that day. But yeah, I was doing like, I was getting some nasty bicep pumps and stuff like that. So my biceps blew up, you know, nothing else. I don't even know if I gained any weight or anything, maybe a couple pounds, nothing notable. Um, and then, you know, as I did research, I heard about starting strength. It's basic beginner program. Uh, so I, 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 I studied the heck out of it. Like I got textbooks about it back here before I ever did it. Um, uh, I actually had to convince Abby to let me, uh, get the gym membership because, you know, back then we didn't really have any subscriptions or memberships because, you know, growing up, your parents take care of all that. So we did, we thought it was a big responsibility to have a gym membership. You know, it's $40 coming out of your check every month, you know, or your bank account yeah, every month. Big commitment, big, yeah. big money. You know, you've never done that before in your life. And now we have like 20 subscriptions. So it's no big deal now, but back <laughs> then it's probably our, like our first one. And you know, we had Netflix after that. We were using somebody else's before that. So basically our first subscription, I had to prove it to her that I was going to be consistent. So it was a couple of months later and she finally allowed me to, you know, I say allowed, you know, she, she agreed we could do it. It was smart. I mean, you got it. You got to collaborate with your spouses on this stuff. You can't, you know, cause it's, it was, a, we were staying with my dad at that time. You know, no shame in that. I was, you know, trying to save up some money, yeah, save that money. And, uh, you know, you can't save money if you're spending it. So exactly. we made that decision. I started in the gym and, did starting strength. I started about 105, 110 pound squat and bench press. You know, that's basically nothing, you know, but that's where I started. Form was terrible. And, you know, now I have a 410 pound squat and 275 bench. You know, it went straight linear. I did that program. I actually did starting strength three times and I've made gains on it every time. It's super, super basic full body program. You know, you go in there, squat, bench, deadlift three times a week. So basically it's very low volume. Just go in there, lift heavy weights, put more on next time. Pretty simple. Uh, so that's what I did. Uh, CrossFit, you know, I kind of found CrossFit whenever I was, you know, at the house doing the home workouts and cause they like dominate YouTube, honestly, you know, from my point. And I found Nick bear and a couple of CrossFitters. So I'll, I knew I wanted to do CrossFit. I didn't know how hard it was going to be. But I knew that I was super weak and I wanted to get strong first. So I spent a solid year of just doing uh, strength training. You know, I had a couple interruptions. There's quarantine, shut the gym down a couple times. So or actually, we Man. just once. But I was talking know. about somebody with that today. I was like, the yeah. saddest time was when, because I think, yeah, my fitness journey, probably like a year after it was 2020. So I was just like full peak. I was going to the gym, ultimate consistency. And then they're like, oh yeah, the gym's closed. Shut down. Bye. And that's when I actually got into the Nick Bear workouts was then. Uh, and then when the gym opened back up, you know, however long later, I went and did starting strength again because I lost strength. So I might as well start back, you know, basically easy, easy beginner gains again. And yeah, actually- That's where I'm at right now. I got way stronger. You know, I put on probably another hundred pounds that time. Because you can go- you can go a lot farther than you think with it, you know, with any workout, uh, you hit kind of a stall. It's good to like step back and try again. But, and then that next year, uh, we did our first 5k it was that same year actually. So I did the starting strength and then I did, uh, prepared for the 5k. So I did Adam Clink's run fast squat heavy program. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, that's my ultimate goal is to match that is to do a 500 pound squat and a sub five minute mile on the same day. I'm a long way to go. But that's, I mean, that's a solid goal to me. Uh, that's something to chase, you know, it, man. Yeah, I mean, shoot for the moon, hit the stars type thing. Uh, but it's actually, you know, I might end up hitting it, <laughs> you know, if I keep going the years down the road. But I think I can do it, honestly. But we're going to talk about that another day. Uh, so I did that program, his program. And then the next, after I finished that program, I started doing CrossFit. You know, just followed the CrossFit programming at the gym. Uh and then I hurt my back, which put me back about six months of just... Yeah, them back injuries are... Bro, it was bad. Tough, bro. And it's mental, bro. Tough. It's Injuries are like... Because you're like, man, am I ever going to be able to do this? And you're seeing other people do stuff you want to do but can't. 
You, know, like, you can't even yeah, imagine it's like yourself a middle block. It. Yeah, yeah. I've got and a finally funny story for the that. future. Whenever I own middle yeah. block, when it comes to, <laughs> I'm talking about. I went to chiropractors, <laughs> physical Damn, therapists. Bro. You know, I'm kind of stubborn, so it took me probably three months to go to the first one of those. But anyways, uh, yeah. So I, I went to physical therapy, started back at the gym doing starting strength again, and I got even more gains. And then I was like, well, I'm already doing this, so I'm gonna keep going. I did what's called the Texas method. I uh, if you know, you know, it's a, it's a branch off of that. So it's more of an intermediate program. So I got really strong doing that. And then the open was right after that. Uh, and then I did mayhem with Peyton cook. You know, this is a CrossFit program, not very committed because conditioning sucks and I'm not paying for it. So I ain't got to do everything. So uh, that was a couple, that was about four months ago. That brought me to, and then I reached out to my good buddy, Lake Dubois, who will be on the podcast. Everybody we mentioned <laughs> seems to be yeah, coming yeah. on the podcast. But he's like bodybuilder guy, super intelligent about this stuff. Yeah. I uh, I trust him because I know, you know, I agree with a lot of stuff uh, that he, you know, he he believes when it comes to this stuff. And, you know, I, I, I kind of know where he stands on a lot of stuff. So... And I actually had him on my YouTube channel a while back too, but uh, he's definitely coming on the show. Uh, for, so the, for the last during the marathon prep, probably three or four months, like since having our, our second child, I've been on uh, kind of a minimal bodybuilding split. Well, actually, Olympic lifting is was my primary, and then bodybuilding uh, and running as well, preparing for the marathon. That's kind of been where I've been up until the marathon, and now. I'm on the CrossFit Train and Think Tank program. I've been talking so long, my throat hurts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but that's where I'm at, and that's water. how I got where I'm at. Maybe I hit Stay it hydrated. off. Who cares? You know, hydration. Hydration. Pre- I'm drinking yeah, my pre-workout. You... This is non-caffeinated. That's crazy. Oh, so it's just like the good stuff without the Well, caffeine. it's actually just like Endo Pump. It's another BPM product. Uh, maybe I'll just get an ambassador shit with them because I've been plugging them this whole Yeah, we'll hit Nick up. I mean, yeah. I'm doing this program right now, so. so I'm doing some endo pump. It's uh it's you know, it's good for the late night sessions. I'd rather have the caffeine, but I know I'll be up till six in the morning if I take caffeine right now. I feel like caffeine negatively affects me now. I feel like um Could be. Did you like wing like, off of it? Yeah, like I, I didn't take in as much for a while and then i took some the other day but it's like it's more if i go over a certain amount i think if i stay below yeah. like a hundred grams for the day i'm fine milligrams like, yeah milligrams my bad 100 <laughs> grams die, bro it'd be, it'd be crazy <laughs> that's a that's some peyton franklin numbers right there yeah bro just baseline three baseline. pre-workout shots yeah, but uh, yeah, if I stay under a hundred milligrams, I'm solid. Like I get enough. That's to not much. Do it. That's like yeah, one no. shot. Yeah, all I do is pre workout. Yeah, I don't, I've only I only drink coffee on rest days now. So okay, so I feel like I when I do it, especially when I run, it it, it really affects me. I I didn't yeah. think about it. Until it will the race. affect you on running. Yeah, because I just, took some on race day just because I'm used to it. But if you're not used to it, man, it'll shoot your heart rate up and you'll be like blown <clears> up. Yeah. But like my my caffeine habits, well, 4 a.m. Dylan, like pre-workout as soon as you wake up or a rain or an energy drink. And then I get home, make coffee and probably another coffee later in the day. And if I'm feeling, my, you know, if I'm, if I haven't had the caffeine, you know, the energy drink, I'll drink an energy drink. So I'm probably drinking an energy drink and or pre-workout, and some coffees throughout the day, which now I'm not doing that. I only I drank a Ghost, which is only 200 milligrams of caffeine, and that's all. I actually had, I had a coffee too, so it's it's down lower. I'm trying to get my body back down, but yeah, it's pretty useful for like performance enhancing. Uh, yeah, you just gotta know like you don't want to overdo it. Where your body's at with it, test yeah. out some stuff, see how you perform on it. Do not. On race day or performance day, whatever yeah, you're don't doing, try anything lifting, new. do not do anything new. Because unless you're just in a situation where you have to. Because during the marathon, when I caught cramps, 
and there was people coming by being like, "Do you need this? Do you need that?" I just took it from them because I was like, "Let's I be honest, know. your your strategy was not, you know, you were, it was, you know, it was so yeah." Poor. I would say hydration wise. I would say, um, I think I for some reason because I always, you know, I always wear my hydration belt and fill those up, and they do pretty good for a while. But the thing during the race was. When we'd get to the stations, I don't know why, but I thought the cups would be f- a little bit full. But probably more than half of them were like only like a third of the way full. Yeah, well, you don't want to waste so much water because most people are just gonna take one swig. Anyway. I mean, that's true. I-, I was just saying, like, I know you're this getting for next something every year. mile. Yeah, like I'm definitely gonna take a put a bottle on my back or something. Yeah, y'all always looked me at me every every time we ran a long run and were like. Looked at me crazy because I had so much water and electrolytes and all that. I'm like, bro, I'm not finna find out what happens when I don't get enough. <laughs> yeah, because like uh, really when everything started to get better was when this lady handed me an actual full water bottle. Yeah. And I was able to just <laughs> keep that water bottle and put it in my hydration pouch. And after that, man, I was just like, you know, every time I get thirsty, boom, I'd have something right there. I did have like a bunch of Gatorade and stuff, but it just... Yeah. Water is... We'll talk about that another day. Great. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So, what about you, man? How'd you get into fitness? Tell us, take us back to um, you know, Trevor crawling in the floor. <laughs> crawling in the floor? What are you talking about? As a baby. Oh, oh yeah. No, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't go back that over. far. Oh. I mean, like, like, I played sports and stuff, and... I mean, especially when we got into football, you know, we started, that's when we started lifting weights the very first time. And I didn't know what we were doing. I mean, we were following Coach Turner's program at first, which was just old school working out. Yeah, I don't even remember it. (laughs) I remember he would play the videos and these were like VHS tapes or something that he would put on a projector somehow. It works, it works. Or they would like wheel in the little TV thing that they have at schools. I don't think they have them anymore. Some I don't of those even know guys what they were had. jacked, bro. Yeah, Some I mean it. It worked. It was like old school bodybuilding stuff. I think. Yeah, could be. But I, no um, I never did it. Like I said, <laughs> I always, I always tried to hide in the bathroom. Yeah, because um, so but Coach Turner wasn't there when we. He was just there for spring training, and then he was gone. And then we had Coach Ely and. I started working out with um, Popewood and Austin Redwine. So yeah, I went from like two like, of the most Jack guys in the whole group. Yeah, I like fit, I don't know how you fit in with them. I don't know either. Like literally, I just started in. working out with them, and then all my gains started shooting up. It was crazy. But then I, I broke too. my arm, and I was just like full reset to zero. And then it kind of just. St- Really didn't never come back from there. I never gained my full strength back until you know later on, like after high school and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, I think for me, it's kind of like like when you spoke about losing, you know, a child. It's like like really like trauma. I feel like that's what dove me into working out again, or like wanting to really dive into it this time. For me, you know, it's like heartbreak like losing somebody that i loved back then and honestly it was just life like uh you know changing different jobs like life wasn't turning out like i thought it was supposed to be going and living with my grandparents for a little bit just to get away from everything but it it just hit a point i remember it was august 2nd 2019 i wrote down i was like i'm not gonna be this little stick skinny kid anymore i want to actually we feel healthy (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, like, we'll throw that up too. I'll show y'all what I looked like, like yeah. day one, one forty four. Yeah. We were about one hundred forty four pounds, soaking wet. You know, and but you're tall, uh, so. yeah, and then I'm tall, so it's it stretched out. Even it made more. you look like yeah, yeah. Like you could see my ribs. It was bad. So, I just remember I was like, bro, I'm tired of this. Like, I'm tired of looking at myself in the mirror and being like. I'm so skinny. I can't, I can barely lift this stuff and I have like feeling sick half the time. So what happened was, um, I think I was like, you know what, just to keep myself accountable, I'm going to hire a coach. So I didn't, I had no clue where to look. I can't even remember how I got put onto this coach, but it was like an online coach because I was living in the middle of nowhere with my grandparents. So I was like, I don't have access to a gym right now. 
I was like, I need just some really good at home workouts, but I also want someone to kind of walk me through the nutrition because I had no clue how to do any type of that stuff. I was just like, I sure. just eat some food and that's a big go to part bed. that most people neglect. Yeah, I think that was. I wanted him for the more for the nutrition than the working out, to be honest. And the accountability. Accountability, I would say, is huge in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. Changes the game. Yeah, so, um, man, I, I, would, I started, and then a month, so when I started, I took a progress picture. Because so I was like, my coach was like, you really need to start taking progress pictures. Because yeah. this is how you're going to get motivated. When you start seeing results, you start getting addicted. And it's like, oh, I got to do more. I want to be more committed. Yeah, that drove but me for sure. Yeah, and it's really that first month of doing it. Because like a lot of people, they start and then they get in a week. And the first week is the hardest because you're just, you're barely getting through the workouts. And you're so sore that you sore, can't even get up. Man. Yeah, and then you, like it's most so people, bad. they got to go do their jobs. And they're super sore. And then they just go home and they just collapse. And they're like, what am I doing? I can't, I can't work out. Luckily, I wasn't in that position. So and Eventually, but, you get used to it and you have a new baseline. Yeah. So about a month after, I took my first progress picture. And I was like, holy crap. Because a lot of what people, yeah, yeah, that's how it felt. I'm huge. A lot of people, um, a lot of people that start out, they get these things called newbie gains no clue what that yeah, was not everybody <clears throat> but man i like i pumped up in size within a month and i was like holy crap because i had like terrible 150 posture. pounds i'll show that on here too i had terrible yeah, yeah posture. i remember that like slumped over all the time and i was like as soon as i started working out it's like the muscles because i the whole time i thought is this your spine you know kind of like seeps over but it's really like the muscles that pull your yeah. spine back is how you can correct your posture. weak muscles yeah, I have weak muscles everywhere. So, started seeing results. Finally, I did. I did that for about, I think, four months, and I had put on. I had set the goal. I was 144 when I started. 144 pounds. And I wrote on August 2nd. I was like, weigh 160 by the end of the year. That's what all I wanted to do. That was what 16 pounds, or something like that. So I, I put on math. 16 pounds in. That's a yeah, lot. That's, yeah, in what, like three and a half, four months? And that was like the healthiest I'd ever felt. Were you the like, first time. when was this? This was 2019. Yeah, so you, were you like dealing with like some, you were dealing with a lot of stuff. Yeah, no, it was, you? yeah, that's when I was going through a breakup. I was changing jobs, changing careers. I do like video degree and drone work now. So back then I was working at a dealership changing oil. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Yeah, no so offense. like <laughs> like like being that small and working at a dealership and just you know, you're having to lift these heavy tires. Yeah, bro, stuff. you gotta be fit for life. Fit for the yeah, job. Fit for your job. Exactly. So yeah, I mean I was just going through a bunch of stuff and I was just trying to rebuild my outer self, my inner self, callous my mind, just whole this whole new chapter of my life was opening up yeah and fitness was I mean, that, definitely like the start of it all yeah i don't know what it is i think we're gonna go deeper on another episode but i don't know if it's like that fitness distracts you from all your problems or or like like i mean i think it's just pushing the yourself i don't know it's yeah it's, got, it's hormones for sure yeah hormones but yeah whatever, you know, whatever i you think for it. me though look now that i'm thinking about it for me the best part of working out was when Feels 4 confidence. o'clock would roll around, 4.30, I was done working for the day, and I was about to work out, and I would take some pre-workout. Bro, First time ever taking makes pre-workout. Feel right. That stuff, to me, was almost like like depression. It would cure Bro, my depression. I feel you. For the amount of time that I was working out. Because I never took any caffeine. I never took any stuff like that. You know, I had it the It makes everything better. Stuff. It's yeah, a drug. So, I will say that that caffeine, really helped. Like scientifically, caffeine makes everything better. Like it makes you, if you add caffeine to a hamburger, it'll make it better. Like for real. Yeah, it just it just improves your confidence too. Like the working out yeah. and seeing results. You know, put in the work, put work in. Let's go. Yeah, 
Put in work, see results. That's my motto. That's kind of how we got the title. Put work in. Put in yeah. work. There's a couple podcasts about that. So put work in. All right, bro. So you're at, you're doing the home workouts. You put on 16 pounds. Where we got? Where we at now? So now this is the first time I'm getting in the gym for the first time. So this was rolling on the new year. You know, setting new goals for the new year. I've got this 2020. New, yeah, 2020. January 2020. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you said. This Bad is supposed timing. to be. This is supposed to be the best year. It's the ever. year, bro. It started out like everybody was like, "Yeah, 2020, man." You yeah, see, bro. I was you, super you know, fit. See clearly now, vision, so many best shape like of my life at that point. I uh, I remember we were in Miami. I was you know confident on the beach, living took my shirt the off. That's and a good then, thing too, confidence. Yeah. So when I got back, it was probably like midway through January. I had moved uh, in with my friend Sean. Uh, over in Oxford. And then uh, the, he was just like, bro, why don't you just come to the gym with me? I was like, bro, I don't know. I've been doing these these house workouts. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready for the gym yet. So I went, hadn't touched the gym weight since probably high school. And I mean, my gains went just in the first, Beyond. probably even like the first day. Like the pumps were like way like I would look in the mirror, I'm like, yeah. "Holy crap, I'm swollen!" Because the oh, the weight, the, yeah, the yeah. weight. Because I didn't. Ha- That's the only thing is like I was limited by how much weight I could I mean, lift. You're doing what? Push ups, push ups. I mean, what dumbbells? I, the could do. biggest dumbbells I had were 30s, I think. Yeah, there's only so much you could do with that. Yeah, I so, mean, you can only add reps forever. I mean, you're doing sets of a thousand. Yeah, as soon as I got in the gym with him, I mean, all my gains and everything just took off. Like, everything was blowing up. My shoulders were blowing up. Arms were blowing up. Legs were getting there, you know. Squatting quick tip. It's hard. Add weight. Yeah, still hard. Add weight. (laughs) You have, you you know, your proportions aren't squat optimal, but uh, you make it happen, bro. Long way down. Yeah, but so whenever I moved in with Sean, he was actually doing this i don't know what would you even call it just like just strength Straight up training volume yeah. bodybuilding like sets of 10 on everything yeah big weight like, like the most you can do for the most reps yeah it's like make it hurt do it again do another exercise anything yeah. you can think of because i was gym used to always doing like chest. three sets and then with him it was always like four sets of everything and they would be by yeah. 10 at least yeah nothing was lower heaviest than weight it's like basically like break it down, be sore for seven days, do it again. By the time you recover, do it again. Exactly. It's and fun. then uh, his his aunt actually was like, she was getting into like meal prep because I was like, man, I, I can go to Walmart and it takes so long. And it's like this, I know I have to do it, but it's like this is just one hurdle that's stopping me from gaining weight is because I wasn't t- intaking enough. But Sean's aunt was actually doing meal preps and she had like a full menu. You could get, you know, really like a week's worth of food for at that time, like less than sixty dollars. That's lunch that's and good. dinner. So how much I wonder how much it is now, bro. That's that's tempting. I don't know. Yeah, because she's pretty close to you. She's uh I don't even know what that road is, but it's about it's closer to baseball than Say it is. Say her address. And you know her name and her address on here, so everybody can. Yeah, you know, I'm just kidding. yeah. Don't say hit her up. <laughs> but yeah, on Facebook. So, I mean, after that, it was you know I did that for until the pandemic shut down the gyms, and then we were doing pretty much like you said, CrossFit stuff at the house. I mean, we were ordered to get like stuff here and there. We got a barbell, but and everybody was buying home gyms bro we actually funny story we got a home so expensive like his dad was working a job and they were moving it out of the house and it wasn't the best home gym but it was still like you could get some work done with it and we we loaded in the truck we take it back to the house we set it on the front porch because we were going to clean it it had like a little bit of like dirt and stuff on it because it's sitting in the garage and we go to town we go back to town because we're going to get the weights or something that went with it we come back and it's just gone Bruh. Someone stole it straight off the front porch. Bro. What? 
So uh, we didn't get to use that at all. And we were doing uh, Athlete X. He had some insanely hard workouts at the house. Yeah. Like, I remember the first one we did, I like puked because it was just so different from just lifting heavy weight. I mean, there's only so much you can do with just body weight. You got to like hurt. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were hurting. I can tell you that much. But yeah, I mean, from from there, it's it's really just changed a bunch. I went from doing that to I never loved running. And then summer of 21, we were living in Miami. We were back in That's Miami. last year. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, summer of 21, went down there and started running, and I was just like, I had, I was had I, for probably over a year, I've had like bad back pain, knee pain, just from, probably honestly from just not stretching enough. I look back on it now, and I think it's a lot of that. And even like that 5K we, th- we did, I mean, my foot was messed up from October all the way until that summer. Wow. That toe or whatever that got messed up? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that sounds brutal. You had definitely some issues that's not normal yeah so when i started running i like no joke the back pain went away the feet pain went away the 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 pain that i've had in my knees since high school because of just like dunking the basketball they were just gone and i was like man there's something to this running thing i was like i could barely even run a mile but i was like man I, i really enjoy this so started doing that a lot more which is going if you do not eat and it's going to destroy your mass so i lost probably like 10 pounds like right off the rip but i was like man i love running so then uh we started signing up for more races me and dylan did a few 5ks here and there and then we were just like you know what let's sign up for a half marathon next year let's do it i was like okay but then dylan's baby luca was going to come into the world around the same time we were going to run the half. So he knew that we weren't going to be able to do it. So I was like, bro, let's just, let's just do the marathon. So it's really just been marathon training till now. And I'm just, I'm excited. I mean, I'm kind of stubborn. I was going to do it. I was going to say I was going to do it, but I probably wouldn't end up doing it. I would have signed up. It was just like, if we're going to do a half, we might as well do a whole. Cause we did what two or three halves during training. And it was just, I I did one another day. We're supposed to do that many, but. We did it, you know, the three of us did three. Yeah. One apiece. I did two because I, I was yeah. like, I PR'd my, my half. Well, you, were more, you were more prioritizing the running than I was. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely towards the end, too. I was like, you know what? Just screw lifting yeah. weights. Cut I'm everything else out. It's just um, it's finding the balance, especially back then, was just so hard. I don't know. I, I definitely... Yeah feel like with this structure of finding a good I mean yeah it's built for that yeah yeah so and then we're at the marathon and that's where we're at yeah so now we're here December 2022 right now let me look I'll tell you the exact weight it's probably like 183 I'm dropping weight again you know I went a couple weeks around the marathon my weight kind of went up uh but let's see. This morning I weighed in at 183.6. My average for the week is 182.7. I'm trying to get down. So right now my goal is to like drop some weight to get like as lean as I can before the open. Uh I'm moving really slow when it comes to dropping weight cuz I don't want to I don't want to lose too much muscle and uh that kind of hurts your performance too and uh yeah, it gets it, depressing, man. Based. Yeah. When you start losing it. I'm trying to hit probably, we said 15% body fat, which Lake is still coaching me, even though I'm following the program. He's coaching me on my nutrition. Uh, But 175 is like, I was there and I was like in the best shape of my life. Like, that's when I PR, like my mile time is 635 and I haven't hit that since I hit that. Like, it's been like a year and a half, two years ago, probably. I don't even know. Uh, But. Yeah, I was like my lightest in, and uh, it was like eight something before that. So I dropped like ninety seconds off just by losing weight. So, yeah, I mean a lot of I got put a lot of weight on when I was doing the the last cycle of starting strength, and 
the Texas method, just straight up putting it on. Like the, it's really hard. Five sets of five. You're doing five pounds more than last week, and your goal is to get that weight up, whatever it takes. So that night before and that day of the workout, I'm just like four or five thousand calories. You know, I'm like I'm getting this weight up at all costs. So I was, you know, that was, that served, that served its, its purpose. I knew I was putting on more fat than I needed. So here we are. I'm trying to lean down just a little bit, get to a good, uh, you know, body fat percentage. That's good for performance. Uh, even with running, it's, it's not good to have a lot of extra fat on you. Uh, so I'm trying to get to an optimal weight and, uh, you know, try to stick at that and try to get my squat back up. My squat has taken a dip, you know, with the marathon training, losing weight. Uh, we dropped my squat frequency down, uh, and just a lot of a lot of other factors. New baby, less sleep, uh, kind of cuts into it. I could probably do it. I just haven't been hitting the higher percentages I was. So lighter weight, you know. I was hitting four ten for a single. You know, the other day I went for a heavy single. It was three thirty five, and that's, I mean, that's a lot less. But it moved good. But uh, it felt really heavy to be honest. So we're gonna work that work back up and hopefully you know this time next year be leaner stronger faster etc be fit i'm getting fit bro you're getting fit yeah getting i hear fit. you bro ah, fitness is just fun bro yeah. i, I want to do all that i want to do triathlons i want to run Unless i want to get injured and that's yeah not fun. that's not fun but then you know you could always probably try something else but uh yeah man i've I really just want to keep up with my friends. Like I want to squat. I mean, I want to, I want to bench press with Sean. I want to squat with Lake, you know, deadlift with Peyton cook, you know, do CrossFit with him and, uh, run with you. So, Hey man, that's uh you're, you're going to be a heck of an athlete. If you keep at it. Yeah. Yeah. Next, you know, about 30 years, I'll probably be, you're gonna be right. like a Swiss army knife. Hey man. Got all you the, what they say. Jack of all trades is a master of none, and then there's another <laughs> bit that I don't remember. You know, people always quote that, but there's actually another bit of it that actually goes back to saying that jack of all trades is good. But whatever, it is what it is, bro. I'm having fun. That's all that matters. Yeah, me too, man. I'm I'm already stronger it. and fitter than you know the majority of people in the world. Yeah. So I may not be the best, the best, but whatever. Yeah, we uh. We'll definitely, I think, I think having a podcast just talking about our goals is going to yeah, be for sure. a real cool yeah, we, one. We, we, we dipped on a lot of stuff that we're going to hit on probably at least like there's, there's probably like around 10 things we said that are going to be holding other podcast yep. today. So we're still figuring this thing out. I'm loving it though. I like how it kind of came together that, cause we had already brainstormed a lot of topics but we were. This is one of our topics, and somehow all of our topics kind of melt into this one topic we did today. We're gonna have to get Peyton Cook on and talk about his journey a little bit next time, I guess. Kind of throw that into whatever we do next. But uh, yeah, I mean that, that kind of explains why this is a fitness podcast. I mean, yep. we prioritize it. It's kind of like, honestly, you know, besides my family and God, you know, it's what you know drives me through the day, and uh, what I look forward to the most. If I could just work out all day you know not you know my bills were paid i'd do that but yeah like <laughs> experiment you know be like yeah. oh man i'm gonna try this out oh i'm just getting paid to do this stuff come on yeah bro that's the, i think yeah, i think there's pressure the that comes with that though like when you're at that type of level yeah there's there's literally there's no days off when you're you're like a fitness influencer or something like that because yeah. i mean there's, there's always someone comes... else that's working harder in the gym yeah. to get your spot that's true. Hey, nobody's taking like... our spots. Right. <laughs> <laughs> David Goggins David quote Goggins. inserted yeah. here. Been loving that book. Yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah, I'm you definitely going to get into that. If you haven't listened to David's first book, Can't Hurt Me. Can't Hurt Me, bro. Do that one first. It's a, it's a good book. I like binge read that. This one's called what? Never Finished? This, something like that. Yeah, Never Finished. I think I think I think I'm liking this one more. I mean, the first one's definitely, you know, it's the first one. So there's a lot of structure. 
beginning to end. This one kind of jumps around a lot in the beginning and then levels off and has a clear yeah. storyline towards the end. But it's a lot of like later in life, his the lessons that he learned and that when you think you're at your peak performance, just wait 10 years. You'll surprise yourself. Right. Yeah, 10 years you could do get so much better. Yeah, it's you know, I mean, uh, really a peak, like a lot like, of this stuff, man, is it's yeah. mental. And you're building yeah. such a callus whenever you're doing this stuff. Yeah, so. we could definitely push ourselves much further. Like I look back and I'm like, man, I haven't even started yet. I haven't even tried. Like I haven't even pushed myself. Like in the moment, I'm like, man, this crap is hard. But then I look back and I'm like, man, that wasn't that harder. hard. I could do that. Yeah. I could do that again. I could do that hard, you know, faster. I could do that better. You know, you know, nine times out of ten, I look back and I'm like, yeah, I could. You know, I didn't even push myself, basically. In the moment, it felt like I'm going to die, but, you know, hindsight's yeah, I mean, 2020. Sometimes that's uh, finding a gym, buddy, but, you know, don't rely on that. Yeah. But if you can actually sure. have that, that's, uh, I would say that's key in the beginning. Once you it get definitely to a holds point, you you're accountable. Like, yeah, 100%. Because they'll be like, you like can you do were saying earlier. That. Yeah, gym. Because yeah, they're like, hey, we got to do this. You hold each other accountable and you push each other. Uh, but you know they're not always going to be there. At the end of the day, exactly. Because you don't like right wanna... now, I, I don't have any gym partners. <laughs> yeah, well, me either. Mackenzie, she does come and she's doing a good job starting yeah, her but, fitness journey again. Yeah. But it's like yeah. we're not doing the same workout. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it's fun when yeah, we exactly. do. But uh, I think I think for me, especially like if I have a good book to listen to, working out alone is yeah. a lot of fun because I'm just focused yeah. on the book. And it's kind of like, what work am I doing? Okay, then my body kind of just does the work. Yeah, I've been kind of experimenting and just feeling out what I, like I'm I'm a podcast or, you know, I'm listening to, you know, Christian rap or something or, you know, some days I'll listen to country, bro. And I'm like, it was one day I was like listening to some Zach Bryan and I was like, I had my earphones in and I was like, I hit a PR and I was like, man, yeah. It was like, it was like some sad song and I'm like, it's like shot testosterone through my body or something. I don't even know. Yeah, I never had that like, happen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to like call Peyton Cook out. He's not oh. here. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. Nef- okay. I'm not even calling him out on that. But okay. like the dude. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's what's up with him, but he's been hitting like I don't even know if he's been to the gym this week. But you know, it, he might be going through something we don't know about. But whatever, man. I'm calling you yeah. out, Peyton. Respond to this. Respond. Give us an we'll excuse. See, we'll see if he uh, if he listens because this is at the very That's end. That's true. And uh, we'll probably already record another one before he hears this. But yep. yeah, you know, this is something that I was telling people when I had a couple of workout partners. I'd be like, they'd come up with an excuse why they couldn't come, and I'd be like, Yeah, man, you got an excuse, and he'd be like, I don't want an excuse. That's my reason. I'm like, Yeah, bro, we all have excuses. You know, it's whether you use it or not. Like, I could always come up with an excuse. Like, you have yeah, everybody something. has a good, everybody has a good reason not to do it. Do it anyway. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's that's the difference between somebody that's going to win and somebody that's, you know, they're just making the competition. You know, excuses like this person, they did it anyway, and they have all the same, if not more, excuses. You'll find that the people at the top, man, they have been through so much stuff, and I guess they just figured out, like, we all go through it. Like, yeah, you know, life like, sucks, but hey, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to go yeah. harder. It's like um, David Goggin is a book. He was like, he's like, I don't do it till I'm tired. I don't do it till uh, or stop whenever I'm, like, weak in it. It's like, I stop when I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you think you're the only one that's tired? You think you're the only one that doesn't have responsibilities? Like, half these people, most people have, like, some of these people don't have an ounce of the responsibility some people do and these people are doing way more you know what i'm saying like yeah it's kind of somebody told me this one time that that there are people out there that are more talented than me not not no 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 that's not what they said there are people out there way less talented than me that are working harder and that are going to beat me because they're working harder and i'm not doing anything and it's kind of like what's it called you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. 
But yeah, exactly. you know, if, if you're talented and you work hard, oh, it's over. Yeah, there ain't really no stopping. But you don't have an excuse. Like everybody in this world goes through the same exact stuff. You're not special, and you know at the same time you are special. You are unique. But everybody goes through crap. Yeah, it's your own race, man. It's only as hard as you make it. Exactly. It's your race. You know, rant of the day. Rant of the I'm day. Not, yeah. I went, none of that was directed towards Peyton. I'm just, you just got me, you know, we kind of got on a tangent, but. You get fired up gotta, sometimes, but. Yeah, they, I get I'm fired up, it. man. I'm loving it. I'm kind of picking two. on Peyton when I was talking about him because that's just what we do. We're bros, bro. Yeah. So, episode bros two, bro. Episode two. We're here, man. In the can. Yeah, over an hour. Well, look at that. So, all right, guys. Well, this is at the yeah, end. Yeah, we of the could podcast. go on forever, but yeah, we could just, we could sit. Yeah. Here. We got to get some sleep. Dylan's got to work out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I just want to thank each and every one of you for listening or watching wherever you found us. Um, we're gonna try to get on all the platforms. I don't know exactly where we're at now. So right. I know for the most part we're gonna be on YouTube. So check us we out. We got on Facebook there. page. Facebook made. page. Shout out. It's uh put in work podcast. Everywhere put work in. Put work in. Put work in podcast. I told Dylan today, I was like, I'm gonna be saying that so many times through the yeah. first couple episodes. But it's put work in podcast. You can find us on all the platforms and yeah. just follow, uh, follow Trevor. Yeah, follow me, Trevor dot at, at just Trev too. Just Trev. Yeah, I think it's just. I don't Trev. know what channel that is. Yeah, <laughs> just Trev on YouTube. Just Trev. Some fire drone footage. And whatever yeah, else might have some fitness drone stay stuff. Stay tuned. In. Yeah, stay tuned for the documentary marathon documentary. Yep, we got to uh, film follow- some of that this week. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, follow me. Subscribe to me, Deal the Young, D Y L the Young on YouTube. Fitness stuff, face stuff, family stuff, all the stuffs. Uh, doing the challenge seven days, you know, mid, basically midnight workouts. Uh, right now, got marathon vlogs, five K vlogs, training vlogs, all that. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Deal the Young. Follow Peyton. I don't know Peyton Cook. I don't know what his stuff is. He's not here, so I guess he doesn't get the plug. But uh, yeah. That's it, bro.